All right, so now let's look at the ins and outs of the Layers palette. There's lots of little things we haven't really covered so far, so I'm going to lump it all into this video. Uh, first thing that's cool about it is if you ever want to rename a layer to make it something... Uh, more descriptive here we've got that pen layer remember if I turn it on and off just toggle that little eyeball icon layer still there we're just hiding it uh, if I double click on the name of the layer I can just type something else in so I'll call it pen come down here double click on the name we'll call this pen shadow key here is make sure you double click on the name don't double click out here to the empty space because something else happens okay up here in the top left, we have layer blend modes. I have a few videos dedicated to them, so we're going to see that in a little while. Uh, we've got opacity, which we covered. Uh, we've also got layer locking options. So what are these things? Well, let's take an example up here. I'm going to use the butterflies as an example. All right, let's take a look at the first one, lock transparent pixels. Well, just from the name of it, if I turn that on for the butterfly layer, what's happening here? It's locking the transparent pixels. What's the transparent pixels? It's everything else but the butterfly. So I could use my move tool and I can move these guys all around. I can move them wherever I want. I can take my paintbrush tool from the toolbox. I'll switch my foreground to black and I can paint on them. But watch what happens. All right, hold on. Let me go ahead and um, do one thing here. Let's increase the opacity of the butterfly. Oh, that's the pen layer. That's why it's not working. Butterfly layer. There we go. I can take my paintbrush tool. And I can start to paint on them and see what happens there. Because I locked the transparent pixels, it's not letting us paint on anything else but the butterflies. Because the transparency, which is everything around them, is locked. Okay, so I can move it, but I can't paint anywhere else but on the butterflies. So let's turn that one off. Let's turn the next one on, which is going to be lock the image pixels. So what I can't do on this is paint on it. The image is locked. The pixels are locked on that image. I can come over here to my move tool and I can move it around, but unlike the last one, I can't paint on it. So let's turn the next one off here. Lock position. This one is locking, so I can't use the move tool on it. It'll tell me because the layer is locked, but if I wanted to, I could paint on it. And then the last one here, that locks everything about the layer. I can't move it. I can't paint on it. I can't do anything except come over here and delete it if I'd wanted to. All right. Now, why do we have these? Well, it's, it's for a couple reasons. If you're working in a group organization, it comes in handy because whoever opens up your PSD files, well, they can kind of get an idea of what you want to be allowed to play with and what you want to stay locked. And the other one is, is if you're just forgetful. You're working on a lot of projects and you don't want to worry about things like that. So you lock them and that is kind of your cue to that, you know, you know when you come back to a project six or eight months later that you're not going to start messing around with things that maybe somebody the client wanted in that place. They had to stay there and it's just kind of a little visual cue for you. All right, as we move through here, the fill opacity, make sure you check out the video on layer styles because that's really where I'll demonstrate what fill opacity is. We've also got a layer palette menu. It's this little icon over here on the far right-hand corner. All right, when I click on that icon, it opens up a uh, little menu for me, and there's lots of different things inside of this menu of which that we'll go through in the course. But the main thing I want to look at here is the panel options, which, by the way, uh, in CS4, Photoshop is calling the palettes panels. Um, I'm still stuck on palettes, and everybody else is really. But if you look in the menu here, it's called panel options. So when we click on that, it opens up this layer panel options dialog box. This one that I'm going to show you here, you're going to love me for, because I've got really bad eyesight. Okay, And the problem I have is sometimes these layer thumbnails are really tiny. So if you can click inside here, you can click between small. Some people like them small. I actually like them big. So I click on that one, hit OK, and you see how it makes your layer palette thumbnails larger than they were. Just kind of, again, a visual cue for me. It makes it a lot easier. Come back up here to the menu, palette options, and uh, you can turn them off if you want, which I've never seen anybody do. Uh, there's another one here, thumbnail contents. Right now, it shows your thumbnails with the object placed basically relative to where it's placed in the document. So for example, we've got the pen down here. Here's where it shows the pen. When In the overall document scheme, that's really where the pen is. If I turn this to layer bounds and click OK, watch what changes here. 
see how it just shows me the object that's on that layer. It doesn't show me that object in reference or relative to the entire image. Again, this is one of those things. I know a few people that like it, but honestly, most people prefer it the default way, which is entire document. Okay. So that's pretty much some of the main things about the layers palette. Along the bottom here, you're going to see a few different things. Uh, we have the linking icon. This one comes in handy when it comes to making sure you're moving layers that you want, uh, maybe layers that should go along with each other. You can move them together. Perfect example. We have the pen and we have the pen shadow. So if I click on the pen layer and I hold down the shift key and click on the pen shadow, this little link icon becomes enabled at the bottom. When I turn it on, you'll see that these two layers are now linked. What's that mean? Well, that means that now I can move them around, all right, use my move tool, and the pen and the shadow follow along with each other. I never have to move the pen and then move the shadow to follow along. Even if I click off on a different layer, I'll click on the type layer, I can move that, I can come back here, click on the pen layer, they're still linked together, so I don't have to relink them. If I ever want to turn that link off, all you got to do is just click on the link icon, it turns it off. So that's a more permanent way to link two layers together. You can also do what I did before, which was click on one, shift click on another, so both of these layers are, are selected right now, and now I can take the move tool and I can move them both around as if they're one object. The only difference between this and the link icon is as soon as I click off of it, that link is now gone. The next time I click on the pen layer, it's not automatically going to be linked to the shadow layer. So really, it's one of those things that it does actually come in very, very handy when you do have something that you want to make sure whenever you move one object that a whole bunch of other objects follow along with it. So I definitely suggest getting to know that. And then as far as the other icons go, uh, we're going to take a look at each one of these things individually throughout the rest of the course. There's adjustment layers, there's layer masks, there's uh, layer styles, there's layer groups. We're going to look at all those in the coming videos, so make sure you check those out.